maganda Sa pingin sa magulang at sa bahay mo na Sa kalye, beat again! Best friend, natin ang mas suotin kahit saan Ingatan ang kamay, maghugas Pag galing sa labas Sa school, beat again! Sa pila, huwag dikit-dikit Dumistansya para iwas sakit Laging open ang window Para maganda ang airflow Three Bs, tandaan! Bakuna! Dear teachers who are here in Zoom and watching via Facebook Live, we welcome you to the National Science and Technology Fair 2022 breakout session for math teachers hosted by the Gokongwe Brothers Foundation. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I am Ina Salazar and I teach tiny human beings. And in my free time, I also manage and co-founded a small organization called Love Education Philippines. And I will be your host for this afternoon. For the past 30 years, the Gokongwe Brothers Foundation, or the GBF, has dedicated itself to its mission of building the future through education. GBF believes that at the heart of the future of education are our educators. Kaya mabuhay tayong mga guro, di ba? So we're very eager to collaborate and be with our teachers coming from all over the Philippines today. Nasample lang na ako dito sa Zoom ng mga participants from all over the Philippines. Meron tayo from Abra, meron tayo from Cordillera, from Bohol. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Pero bago tayo magsimula, let's get to know more about the Gokongwe Brothers Foundation and their scholarship programs. May I call on Ms. Lynn C. Hernandez, the Program Manager for Educators Professional Development. Magandang hapon po, Ms. Lynn Hernandez. Hello. Hello, Ina. Magandang hapon. At magandang hapon sa inyong lahat, mga teachers. Ayan. Ms. Lynn, ito na nga. Meron akong baon ditong questions, di ba? Para naman maliwanagan tayo at hindi lang konsepto ang Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. Ano nga ba ito? Yes, Ina. Kami po ay isang corporate foundation and we were established by the brothers Mr. John, Mr. Henry, Mr. James, and Mr. Johnson. No? Kung narinig mo na yung kwento, Ina, ni Mr. John, it's actually very inspiring. He started from very humble beginnings, but simula dito na itaguyod niya ang kanyang pamilya at na itaguyod niya ang Gokong Way group of companies into what it is now. And GBF, is the company's way of giving back to the community. So we were established in 1992. Actually, this year, Ina, nagsiselebrate kami ng aming 30th. Happy anniversary. anniversary! Yes, kami ay 30 Come years on. old. Of course, iimbitahin <laughs> ka namin. <laughs> so we're celebrating our 30th anniversary of um, the purpose, no? Um, going by our purpose of building the future through education. So, naniniwala kami, Ina, na at the heart, kagaya nga ng sabi mo, no, at the heart of um, a progressive nation is really quality education. At ang puso nito ay ang ating mga 
guro no kaya hello mga ma'am at sir maraming salamat po no so we prepare the learners through quality STEM educators dahil gusto sana natin na handa sila na maging digitally adept no nakakasabay sa teknolohiya we want them also to be critical thinkers that they make decisions based on logical analysis of facts right and that they are also innovative problem solvers. So habang nagbabago ang panahon, ina nagbabago ang mga challenges. Kaya ang mga solusyon dapat nagbabago din and we hope out for our teachers and our learners na makasabay dito. Yeah, so over the recent years, GTF no in consultation with our stakeholders, nakikipag-usap kami sa iba't ibang stakeholders no, ang ating mga mag-aaral, mga guro, heads of institutions, heads of government agencies and we found the criticality of the role of our teacher. That's why there is a growing emphasis for us as GBF in supporting our teachers. So my team and I, we belong to what we call a, a department called Educators Professional Development. And we take care of programs designed to strengthen our teachers. Sa ngayon, ang ating flagship program is the Teach STEM Scholarship. Wow. Gusto ko lang ulit-ulitin, no, uh, Miss Lynn. Kasi yung mga nanonood sa atin, mga guro yan, di ba? Ang sarap pakinggan na ang guro ay nasa puso ng progresibong bansa. Di ba? Sana nare-realize yun ng mga teachers natin dito. Wow, de ba? Such an honor. At naulit nyo po yung Teach STEM Scholarship Program. Pwede nyo po bang sabihin sa amin kung ano po ba yung programang ito at baka maging bahagi kami bilang math and science teachers? Yes, Ina. So the Teach STEM Scholarship Programs, it develops our pre-service teachers and strengthens naman our in-service teachers, yung mga kasalukuyang nagtuturo na ng science and math. And just to clarify, this is not just for the STEM strands. Ito ay para mm -hmm. sa ating science and math educators across levels. And we would like to help them become champions of STEM in their own community. So siguro maitatanong nila, Ina, no? ano ba yung mm -hmm. STEM champion? So ang STEM champion ay mga guro no? na um, who ha are strong in subject and curricular, curricular knowledge, who are strong <laughs> in their teaching proficiency, yes. yes, and who are also adept in their 21st century skills, they're guided by strong values and characters, and that they are also, uh, they have the propensity to serve the community. Ayan. So, nag-check ako, no, Miss Lynn, kung ako ba ito? Ako ba ay isang STEM champion? Pwede ba akong maging STEM champion? Mga chers, check nyo din yung sarili nyo. Baka pasok kayo dito. Uh, Miss Lynn, can you tell us more about the sub-programs at sino ba yung pwedeng mag-apply? Pwede ba yung mga teachers ng lower grades o pang high school lang ba to? Can you tell us more about that? The Teach STEM Scholarship Programs, Ina, it comes in four forms, no? And these programs, they're an evolution, again, of our consultations with our stakeholders. So, ang una nating programa is the College Degree Scholarship. Para ito sa ating mag-aaral who are graduating senior high school at gusto nila na maging science or math teacher in the future. O para naman doon sa mga kasalukuyan ng enrolled in a bachelor degree in education specializing in science and math. Ang pangalawa naman nating programa no, is similar in field. It's the master's degree scholarship. But this one is for our in-service teachers, those mm. who are already teaching science or math, either in our depth ed schools or in our tertiary institutions. No? So, ang ating mga scholars dito, they've been teaching for at least one year. Then we have also our teacher certificate program. This naman is exclusive to our depth ed teachers para sa ating mga science and math educators who are um, STEM majors but are not necessarily education majors. This program will help them uh, get their teaching units and become licensed professional teachers. And last naman is our master's research grant, which is very, very similar to our master's degree scholarship, except that this is for those who have already finished their coursework, mga nakapasa na din ng kanilang mga comprehensive exam, at mga kailangan na lang magtapos ng kanilang thesis for those in the research track 
or their capstone project for those in the professional track. So these programs, uh, Ina, they are all delivered through our partner institutions. Sa ngayon, naka-flash sa screen, meron po tayo 36 partner institutions and we hope na madagdagin yan in the next few months. And all these institutions are either centers of excellence or centers of development as accredited by CHED. Napakarami naman talagang partner institutions. And I love that you reiterated that the programs are made possible because of the consultation sa stakeholders. Napakamahalaga po niyan, di ba po, Ms. Lynn? Um, Ms. Lynn, itatanong ko na, ano, what are the benefits and the roles of the scholar? Siguro kasi yung iba, ready na mag-apply eh. Ni-ready na yung requirements. At habang, or bago nyo po sagutin yan, para din po ma-invite nyo yung ibang teachers ng math and science, if you're watching live on Facebook, itag nyo na rin po sila para makapakinggan nila kung ano ba yung mga benefits at rules nitong scholarship programs na to. Ms. Lynn, go ahead. Yes, Ina. So our scholars, they receive financial grants of the amounts varying depending on the program. For college degree, the scholars in our public institutions receive 65,000. Ang mga nasa private naman will receive 85,000. This is a fixed financial grant per year. For the master's degree scholarship, they receive 45,000 in public institutions and 65 for those who are in private institutions. Si teacher certificate program naman will receive 30,000 for those in public institutions and 50,000 for those in our private schools. Para sa master's research grant, regardless of where they are enrolled, they receive a support of 50,000 pesos to complete their research. Yan. And apart from that, Ina, no, they receive also scholarship benefits. So they maintain an excellent academic standing. And uh, they also, they also um, receive other scholarship benefits. And then after that, they will be serving back to our communities. Lahat halos ng ating programa, Ina, ang kanilang return service is with our mm -hmm. debted schools. No, Most of it, except for K-Master's Degree Scholarship and Master's Research Grant, where they can serve also in our tertiary institutions. The duration, it will depend on their duration as scholars. So it's one is to one, no one year. If they are one year uh, scholar with us for one year, then they serve back in these schools also for one year. And then for our master's research grant, we hope for them also to share the results of the research to the stakeholder community. Para sa ganon, Ina, mas madami din na makinabang doon sa naging result or napag-alaman nila doon sa kanilang mga research. Ang ganda nun, Miss Lynn. Tama naman, di ba? Ang mga natutunan mo, hindi lang dapat tumigil sa'yo. At napakaganda nitong programa wherein meron silang return service. Uh, ito na nga, Miss Lynn, alam ko, parang yung iba, nag-check na STEM champion sila. If you're watching live on Facebook, just type in the comment section, STEM champion ako. Napakahalagang self-affirmation yan. If you're also here on Zoom, type in the chat box, STEM champion ako. So, Miss Lynn, how can our teachers apply? Ang ating mga interesadong teachers, they're all welcome to apply. Madaling madali lang online, no? It's all online, and they go through this simple process. Now, one is uh, our eligibility screening, so they send their applications online along with their documentary requirements. They they're screened, and those who are eligible are scheduled for a live on online exam. Yung online exam natin, it's dalawang klase ina. No one is a competency mm -hmm. test. And the other is an essay test. Those who will pass will then be scheduled for a panel interview. Karaniwan sa panel interview, nakakasama natin dito ang mga representatives natin from our partner institutions. And those who show excellent performance are selected as a GBF scholar and they are welcome into the GBF family. Yan. So, ang scholarship natin ay bukas hanggang August 31. In-extend po namin no, para mas ma-accommodate ang ating mga teachers. So, you may apply teachers until August 31, 2020. Miss Lynn, parang mapapa-apply na talaga ako. Sinulat ko na yung requirements. Miss Lynn, what are other things in store for our teachers? 
this month in uh, no, this August, we are also gathering our science and math teachers for what we call an online town hall. Ito ay isang pagpupulong, pagsama-sama ng ating mga teachers at pag-uusapan natin dito. Ano nga ba ang makabagong STEM teacher? We will be talking, we will be having different guests who are STEM education experts to talk about the new science and math educator. Sa bawat session, magkakaroon tayo ng ibang iba't ibang speaker. Kaya pwede natin attendan lahat itong mga sessions na to. So teachers, the registration link is flashed there on your screen. This will be exciting. Kaya tara, teach them na. Tara, teach them na. Now, eto na, last na to, Miss Lynn. Parang masulit ko naman yung conversation ko with you, no? Kasi pa-apply na ako, eh. How can we reach out to you if we have any questions? Yes, maraming paraan, Ina, na ma-reach kami, no? Na marati ang GOK, ang Teach Them team. One is through mobile or SMS, no? You can call us or send us a text via our number 0956-413-4827. You may also send us an email through teachstem at gbf.com.ph. Kami din po ay nasa Facebook at Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. And you may also find more details about us and our other scholarship programs at gokongwaybrothersfoundation.org. Ayan, na Napakaraming paraan kung paano makontak sila Miss Lynn at paano maging STEM champion. Okay, teachers, ready na ba? Again, you may contact them at 0956-413-4827. At pinakamadali, if you're on Facebook, just go to Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. Ayan na nga. Maraming maraming salamat, Miss Lynn. Kahit ako na pa notes, start pa lang may notes na agad ako, di ba? Thank you for sharing the scholarship opportunities that GBF is offering for us teachers and to our aspirant and in-service teachers. Kung nakikinig po kayo or nanonood po kayo ngayon, make sure to apply to our Teach STEM scholarship today. Pwede namang mamaya or bukas. Hanggang August 31, 2022 yan. Yeah. Now, yes, thank you Maraming so much. Maraming Teachers, we hold the futures in our hands. The future in our hands, so let's build the future now. We'd like to share with you this short video on the Teach Them Scholarship. Maraming salamat, Ina, at maraming salamat sa ating mga teachers. Maraming salamat, Miss Lynn! GBF offers the Teach Them Scholarship for aspiring and in-service teachers. Science and math educators teaching any level in deaf ed schools or in tertiary schools may apply to any of the four programs under Teach Them delivered through our partner institutions. Reach your dream of becoming a math or science teacher through a college scholarship. Strengthen your knowledge and competencies through a master's degree in science math education. Acquire teaching units and become a professional teacher through the Teacher Certificate Program. Complete your master's degree with a grant for your thesis or capstone project. Scholars receive an annual financial grant and access to scholar development programs. Upon completion, they serve as math and science educators in DepEd or higher education institutions. Apply now to the Teach Them Scholarship Program and be a STEM champion. Let's build the future today. Tara, teach them na! Ayan, kaya naman, tara na, teach STEM na. Maraming maraming salaman, Miss. Salamat, Miss Lynn, for sharing the scholarship opportunities. At kung kayo ay ready na din mag-apply, go na. Did you know that apart from the scholarship opportunities, GBF also offers STEM Collab as part of its capacity building program for teachers. And that's what we have in store for you today. 
Pero, teachers, ano nga ba ang STEM Collab? STEM Collab is both a community and capacity building program for teachers of science, technology, engineering, or mathematics who teach in K-12 private or public schools. Kaya, ma'am, sir, kung ikaw ay nagtuturo ng math at science sa public or private school, para sa inyo po ito. It uses open space technology and social learning to provide an open and safe space for teachers to share insights, best practice, or even ways to overcome challenges in the classroom about a specific topic. Siyempre, hindi lang students ang kailangang may safe space habang nag-aaral. Kailangan din ang suporta ng mga guro na kagaya natin. Di ba, Chers? Kailangan nyo din ang support. Now, for this session, we will be giving you a taste of this new learning experience through the topic, Teaching Math Through Inquiry. Yan. The first hour of this session ay para sa mga math teachers. So if you're a math teacher, stand by. Ang second half of this session will be specifically for science teachers. Just a few reminders before we move forward. Please make sure that you are a member of the STEM Collab Facebook group. Nung last check ko kanina, mayroon na tayong 700 members. At kung hindi ka pa kasali, Go na, di ba? We will post the activity links there and also the feedback form that you will have to accomplish after this session to get the certificate of attendance. Again, very important, mga chers, that you fill out the form to get your certificate of attendance. Since STEM Collab is an open and safe space for teachers, we encourage everyone to interact and participate in the activities and discussion. Wala naman akong kilalang teachers na suplada, kaya mag-interact lang po tayo. Um, as we do that, let us use kind words and keep in mind the value of respect when interacting. Use kind words lang tayo, mga teachers. And for those who are in Zoom, hello! Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Please feel free to turn on your videos. Naka-on ba ang mga videos nyo? And unmute them during the breakout sessions later. Again, these are the mechanics. Review lang po tayo, mga teachers. Join our Facebook group. Listen to our speaker. Practice or participate in the breakout session through Zoom or Padlet and participate in FB group social learning. Napakadali lang maging bahagi ng diskusyon. Let's make the most out of it. Before we do that, let's get to know each other first. For those who are here in Zoom, you will be grouped based on the grade level that you are teaching. So, itype nyo po ang inyong grade level in the chat box. Later, bubuksan natin ang breakout room and you will be prompted to choose a room. Please choose the group where your grade level belongs. In the room, introduce yourself and share your answer to the question, what region you are from and what is your favorite math lesson to teach. Dalawa lang yan, hindi pa yan math problem. What region are you from and what is your favorite math lesson to teach? Tandaan mga chers. And for those who are watching sa FB, wag po kayong ma-FOMO dahil we will be sharing the Padlet link in the Facebook comment section and in our Facebook group. Click the link in our group so you can post your name, your region, and your favorite math lesson to teach. Math lang po tayo, ah. I know some of you are teaching two subjects, but let's put on the hat of a math educator and think about the favorite lesson you want to teach. Okay ba tayo dyan? For the Zoom participants, can you give me a heart reaction? And for those who are watching live on Facebook, just give me a heart reaction reaction also. Maraming salamat po. Ngayon, our breakout rooms will be open. Again, few reminders. Make sure that you enter the group where you belong. Diba? Don't forget to answer the question, what region are you from? And what is your favorite math lesson to teach? Habang nang nangyayari yan sa breakout room, syempre, bibisitahin natin ang Facebook Live. 
comment section to check kung sino-sino ba at anong mga lugar ang ating um, audience. Don't forget to comment, Facebook Live viewers. Nanjan si Ms. Desiree C. Molina Pespes from SJNS San Juan, Ilocos Sur. Good afternoon po sa inyo. From SDO Bulacan, Tara Jane Balsalmo Gonzalez. Good afternoon po. At meron din tayo from SDO Camarines Sur, Ms. Amalia Caballero. Yan. The question again for the Facebook um, live viewers, where are you from and what is your favorite math lesson to teach? Ano nga ba ang inyong paboritong math subject to teach? Ako, pwede bang yung paborito ko na lang na math lesson nung high school ako, natatandaan ko yung teacher ko. Hi, Sir Saul. Paulit-ulit yan, quadratic equation. Favorite namin yan. Okay. We're receiving answers from Region 4A, Calabarzon. Pareho po tayo. Teaching grade 11 from Agoncillo Senior High School. Pagtuturo ng function ang isa sa pinakapaboritong lessons na inturo at its importance in real life. Oo, minsan nami-miss out natin yun, no? Kaya yung mga students, di nila ma-appreciate yung math lesson kasi hindi nila maipasok sa real life. Hello po pa rin sa mga teachers natin, Mr. Conrad Garcia from Alaminos ES, SDO Laguna. SDO Bukidnon, Mr. Jason Jimenez, Region 10. Okay, hello po Mr. Natalio. From Pinalangka Elementary School, Pagayawan District, Division of Lanao del Sur 2. Ganda. Si Sir Jude may sagot dito. Sabi niya, grade 7, linear equations. Parang favorite ko din yun. Aralin. <laughs> Meron din tayo dito on Zoom. Gusto naman nila yung fraction na lesson nila. Okay. Parang grade 5 yan, grade 6. Favorite ko din yan. So for those who are in the Zoom call, make sure that you also participate via or uh, in the breakout rooms, okay? Helen C. Kamag, teaching grade 1. Ang grade 1 pala ay may fraction na. Ayan, nung kabataan ko kasi wala, nagka-count lang kami ng 1 to 5. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kamag. Comparing centimeters to meter. Ayan, si Ms. Ninet. Panday. Yes, Norwell Dala, Daleha. Probability. Favorite na favorite din yan ng mga students. Bernadette Domoloan, grade 11, Math and Research. Thank you. Again, ang question po natin ay, what is your favorite math lesson to teach? What is your favorite math lesson to teach? All topics, sabi ni Sir Conrad. Yes. Meron din po tayo na senior high school teacher here sa SDO Rizal, DepEd Tayo Silangan National High School in Rizal. Favorite naman ni Ms. Jeanette Reyes ng Region 4A Rizal ay functions. Ms. Bernadette Domoloan, linear equation. Yes, yung one is to one, di ba? Gusto ko din yan. Favorite math lesson to teach is about fraction and percentage. Miss Glenda Cruz, sabi niya, business mathematics. Naku, pwede kong maging teacher si Miss Glenda. Nung nag um, NKI ako, yan yung pinakamababa ako sa business math. <laughs> Miss Mary Ann Timbol, integers. Mr. Ken Peter, sabi niya, favorite niya yung um, fractions naman. Okay. Again, for those who are here in Zoom, wag po tayong pahuli. Punta po tayo sa breakout room assigned to you. Again, it's based on your grade level. If you are from teaching kinder to grade 3, please join the breakout room for kinder to grade 3, grade 4 to 6, for junior high school and senior high school. Okay? Join lang po tayo sa breakout room. 
Meron din po tayong sagot na sequencing and finding the missing terms. Ay, favorite ko din yan. Region 4A, Dasmarina City, grade 5. Okay, linear equations. Naku, abangan niyo po ang isha-share mamaya ng ating speaker. He's a very renowned math teacher at makakapag-share ng very practical techniques kung paano ba ituturo yung mga topics na sinabi niyo. Grade 6 fraction, sabi ni Ms. Rhea Bantolo. Good afternoon din po sa inyo. Linear equations. Ang daming topics na sinasabi sa chat or sa sa comment section sa Facebook. Thank you very much, teachers, for being so participative. Maraming maraming salamat po. Para sa ating Zoom participants, you can find the breakout room button at the bottom of your screens. So again, very important po no, sa Zoom participants that you go to your assigned breakout rooms para makilala nyo yung ibang teachers from all over the Philippines at malaman nyo naman kung ano yung kanilang favorite math lesson to teach. Okay. Habang nangyayari yan, dito sa ating um, Zoom call, nandito naman sa Facebook Live ang comments ni Miss Marisa Malilin. Sabi niya, favorite niya ang quadratic equations. Si Ma'am Rose Ann Bacolod Hernal naman of Region 5 Bicol, favorite niya ang fractions. Yun yung mga favorite natin, no? yung kayang i-apply in real life. Ako, ang favorite kong ituro ay conversion. Conversion? Yan. Nakakalito lang, pero pag nakuha na ng students, sabay yung aha moment. So, yun yung best teaching experience naman for me. Good afternoon to all our teachers who just came in on our Facebook Live. Tag nyo na din po yung mga teacher friends nyo who are math teachers para mapakinggan nila ang um, ating speaker for later. Okay. Meron din sagot si Ms. Sisa. Sabi niya, favorite niya daw ang algebra. Magandang hapon po sa inyo, Mr. Joval Malintan, watching from Mangaldan National High School, Pangasinan, Binalonan, Pangasinan. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Mayroon pa tayong isang minuto. Can we get Answers from our participants watching live on Facebook. Where are you from and what is your favorite math lesson to teach? Mr. Ian Almer Kayabyab, good afternoon po sa inyo of SDO Pangasinan 1. Favorite lesson to teach is probability of simple events. Oh, yan. Medyo may kalito yung mga students dyan, pero pag nagets nila, yes. Diba? Kasama tayong napapayes. Gina de la, de Rama, de la Rama, integers. Hello po, Mr. Jojo Gamboa and Nelly Liam Bicoy. Bicoy, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Again, gamitin natin yung oras, no? Na isipin natin yung mga times na nag-enjoy talaga yung students habang nag nag um, tuturo kayo ng math. Isipin po natin 'yan ngayon. At pabalik na nga yung ating mga teachers from the breakout rooms dito sa main sessions. Magandang hapon po muli sa inyo. Mayroon tayong natatanggap na messages or comments dito rin sa ating Facebook page. Um, from Maricar de la Cruz Custodio ng SDO Gapan City, good afternoon. Uh, meron din si Ms. Maria Teresa Agsaway ng San Jacinto National High School, SDO Pangasinan 2. Pasensya na po kayo kung hindi ko nababasa ng tama ang pangalan nyo. But we are really trying, <laughs> okay? Nandyan din po si Ms. Nora Canlas Musni ng Santo Tomas National High School. At welcome back nga po mga teachers here on Zoom. Bitin ba ang kwentuhan? Kung bitin ang kwentuhan, bigyan nga ako ng heart reaction. 
Ayan. Oh, yan, sabi nila, biglang nawala. Oh, nabitin nga yung mga participants natin here on Zoom. Don't worry, we will continue the conversations in a bit. Kayo-kayo pa rin po later sa breakout session. Andito na tayo sa pinakaaabangan. We will continue the conversation in a bit. But at this point, I want to introduce the resource speaker for today. Our resource speaker for today started his career as a high school teacher in the Assumption Antipolo. He is one of the youngest national teacher trainers and a well-sought speaker for Rex Bookstore for various topics. Wow, youngest national teacher trainer. He finished his graduate studies in the field of educational administration at the University of the Philippines Diliman Campus, where he also obtained his bachelor's degree with magna cum laude honors. He passed the licensure examination for teachers with a rating of 90%. Taas no na. He, he is currently serving as the associate professor in the College of Education of UP Diliman. He's none other than Professor Emmanuel C. Manalang. Let's greet him. Good afternoon, Sir Noel. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Thank you, Miss Ina. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Isang mapagpalang araw no, para sa ating mga teachers. And welcome to the STEM Collab, no, efforts of the Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. So, nakapagsimula na tayong magkwentuhan, magkakilanlan, ano, and that's very important. You know, in education, they say this is a very unique profession because in education, we are expected to be professional imitators. No? We can learn best no? from other teachers. No? Yan. Sa pakikinig, panonood sa ating kapwa guru, doon tayo pinaka pinagyayaman no? sa ating kakayanan. So, uh, for this afternoon, my presentation will be, will be very, very simple. Um, we want to understand how math can actually be a subject that can help develop good reasoning and proper mindset for our students. No? You know, uh, having been a teacher of math in the classroom for several years, ang isang problema lagi ng mga estudyante natin, eh, natututunan nila yung konsepto sa math, no? yung mga bagay na kailangan nating malama, ma-share ma ma sa kanila. Ngunit minsan, or kadalasan, they do not know how to apply it in life. They do not know the purpose of it in terms of their actual life. So for this afternoon, uh, I will be talking about some things or some approaches in math classroom. I will be sharing some practical examples and strategies maybe so that we can encourage our students to understand and appreciate math more as a subject that is connected with the actual life. So for this afternoon, I am entitling my presentation, my short presentation, as Math Demystified Through Inquiry. A lot of our students in math would usually fall in love with math or hate math altogether. Madalas ganun lang, ano? Gusto nila or hindi nila gusto. At karaniwa, pag hindi nila gusto, yun ay dahil lutang or sabaw ang pakiramdam nila kapag nasa classroom ng math dahil hindi nila malaman kung para saan ba yung pinag-aaralan nila. No? So for this afternoon, we want to see some ways or principles or perspectives that will help us present our lessons in such a way that it will be relatable to our students. Yan. So let's go to our slides po. Yan. Uh, I will be uh, anchoring my presentation this afternoon on the five key points of inquiry-based approach. Uh, this may not be everything that you can find in an inquiry-based approach, but at least for mathematics, these are the five key points that I, I have ad identified from inquiry-based approach that are very much relevant to us. Number one, when we present our lessons, we should be process-focused. No? We, we are very well aware that in mathematics, merong proseso, merong dulo. May tamang sagot, no? pero merong pagdadaanan bago umabot sa tamang sagot. And most of the times, this is what is crucial. More important than the final answer would be the process. How did your students arrive at the correct answer? Or how did they arrive at the wrong answer? So yung proseso, mahalaga. Pangalawa, investigation. 
inquiry-based approach tells us students learn best in an observation or investigation mode. So why don't we use that in the classroom setup? Why don't we make students focus on the investigation? You may give in, may tamang sagot, pero ang tanong yung nasa gitna. What is in between the given and the final answer? Hindi laging yung dulo ang hinahanap. Sabi nila sa teachers daw, find X pag sa math. Yun. Kaka-find X ng kaka-find X, hindi naka-move on mula sa jowa. No? Kasi hanap sa nang hanap sa, sa X niya. Yan. So, wag daw hanapin lagi yung X. Minsan, ibigay natin yung sagot, tapos tanungin natin, what's in the middle? Parang magandang tingin yun, ano? Math lesson. Given ang sagot, given ang data, ang gitna ang wala investigation. Pag-aralan natin yan mamaya, may example tayo dyan. Susunod discussion monitoring, we are very much aware that when we are teaching our students in math, they will make mistakes. They will make mistakes. So, dapat hayaan natin silang mag second attempt, third attempt, first proposal, second proposal, third proposal. That's why formative assessment is part of the K-12 curriculum. Importante sa math na malanasan ng batang magkamali at mapag-usapan kung ano yung nangyari. Walang magaling na math student na hindi nagkamali. So it's very important we identify that. Discussion monitoring. Next, real life application. Marami sa ating math teachers, pag nag-discuss, hypothetical ang numbers. Maria went to market and bought 10 apples for 150 pe pesos. Gone are the days that you have to imagine numbers for your mathematical problems. I will be giving you some websites, applications that are there in order to provide us with real-life numbers that we can use in our math operations in the class. Yan, mamaya sisilipin natin yan. And then finally, group learning. Group learning. Sabi ko nga, dito sa math, kailangan mo ng two heads are better than one. No? Marami sa mali sa math would be more on carelessness no? or forgetfulness. Kaya magandang mga assessments yung may kailangan nila magtulungan para merong more heads than one. Yung mga carelessness, yung mga simpleng pagkakamali, may iwasan kung group yung kanilang process of learning. So, ito yung limang key principles. And how does this look like in our classroom? I'll be presenting five dilemmas kung saan nakabase sa mga approaches na to, ito yung nagiging tension or conflict among teachers. Mamaya sa mga breakout rooms nyo, pag-usapan nyo, totoo bang nararamdaman nyo yung tension o yung dilemas na pre-present ko dito? Lima yan. And then, at after each dilemma, I'll be presenting simple practical suggestion or even examples on how we can address the simple problems. Okay? So, let's start. Next slide, please. Let's begin with the first dilemma of math teachers. The question would always be abstract or real life. Definitely, there are a lot of abstract things in mathematics. All the formulas, all the operations allowed, the number theory, all of these are abstract forms or abstract realities. They are deduced from the natural environment. But that's exactly the point. Sa pagkaka-abstract natin sa kanila, minsan pag tinuro natin sa bata, ang abstract ng dating natin. Naintindihan nila equation, pero hindi na nila naintindihan. Bakit ganun yun? Sinong may sabi nun? Bakit? Saan nang galing yung katuturan nun? We all know as math teachers that the abstract nature of mathematics actually comes from the natural world. Lahat ng operations na meron tayo sa math, lahat ng abstract formulas na meron tayo sa math, nang galing yan sa totoong mundo. Ibig sabihin, nagsimula yan bilang actual data. Ginamit lang natin ang formulas at equations to make sense of the natural data we, found in the na we find in the natural world. And to a certain extent, that also poses a limitation to our students now. When we present our lessons the abstract way, pag present natin yung lesson, nagsisimula tayo sa formula, nagsisimula sa theory, sa theorem, ang nangyayari, ang, ang pakiramdam ng bata, hindi siya galing sa mundo. Parang galing siya sa ibang, ibang planeta. And it defeats the purpose of math. You should begin your lesson with real-life data. Kasi dyan galing ang mathematic concepts. Mathematical concepts. 
galing sa totoong mundo. So, anong suggestion ko dito? Next slide, please. Suggestion number one, go to this uh, website. No, unfortunately, I could not present the actual website, but if you have time, please go to worldometers.info. Worldometers.info. So, let me type it in the chat box. Baka sakaling makatulong para sa inyong mga uh, may extra gadget. Worldometers.info. Pag tinignan niyo yung website na yan, eto may screenshot siya dito sa gilid. Makikita niyo, may mga numbers yan. May mga numbers yan na real time. Kaya makikita niyo, tumatakbo yung numbers dyan. Parang metro sa tubig or metro sa kuryente. Gumagalaw. Ano yung makikita nyo dyan? May makikita kayo dyan, births this year, or births today, and deaths today. This is real-time uh, number data for specific uh, reports for the world, no? for the entire world. So, ilan ang pinanganak ngayong araw? Makikita nyo dyan, De births today. Ilan ang namatay ngayong araw so far? Deaths today. At gumagalaw yan. No? So, pag tinignan natin to, Mapapakita natin sa mga bata, ito ang itsura ng mundo. If you go down lower, makikita nyo marami pa tong ibang data. Ano yung pinagkagastusan ng mga ng mundo, um, ano ang mga sakit, pinaka-prominente, ano ang mga pinaka-malalaking problema natin sa mundo in terms of energy, water, food, health. Lahat ito by the numbers. How, how much forest loss did we have for this past year? How much desertification? Uh, happened over the past year, how much uh, toxic chemicals are, are, are uh, thrown into the environment for the past year. Meron din dyan data. Ilang taon na lang bago maubos natin ang oil deposit ng mundo. Roughly about 40 years from now, andyan nakalagay kung gano'n ka tagal na lang itatagal ng oil deposit or fossil, fossil fuel na nasa mundo natin. Magandang tignan natin to, kasi makikita natin dito ang mundo in terms of numbers. In terms of numbers. Ngayon, ano ang simpleng suggestion ko? Focus on actual data that can be gathered from the natural environment. Simple lang. Whether grade 1 teacher ka o grade 12 teacher ka, when you introduce your math lessons, begin with these numbers. Make your students go to this website and make them pick up the numbers from this website. Para actual numbers, real life numbers, hindi 10 apples from the market worth 150 pesos. Hindi hypothetical ang numbers. Totoong numbers ito ng mundo. May halaga, may silbe. Ito ang gamitin natin numbers in our math discussions. Whether we're teaching functions, whether we're teaching statistics, whether we're teaching basic operations, linear equation. In all of these lessons, we need numbers, we need data. And oftentimes, we resort to making up hypothetical data. And in the process, we make math feeling ng mga estudyante separated mula sa mundo. Walang kinalaman sa mundo. My simple suggestion, use actual data. Focus on actual data that can be gathered from the natural environment. At ito gamitin natin sa math lessons. Okay? Next. Dilemma number two. Next slide, please. Dilemma number two. Sa bawat lesson, sa bawat paglalakbay, merong process at may answer. May journey at may destination. No? Karaniwan, sa ating mga math teachers, sabi ko nga kanina, find X. Pero hindi natin alam that in order to, to really solve the equation, sabi nga nila, process of elimination. Eliminate your X. So you have an answer for the why. Da ka lang talaga namang mga math teachers, ang lalim ng hugot, no? Eliminate your X so that you can find your answer for the why. Yan. So in the dilemma number two, we are in between the process or the answer. In most math problems, in most of our exams in the past, when I was a student, it is always the answer that matters. Pag nakuha mo yung tamang sagot, very good. Tama na yun. Ako, ang simpleng suggestion ko sa inyo dito, hindi mahalaga yung sagot. Pwede nga, ibigay nyo na yung sagot. Tapos, may solution. Iba-ibang solution. Ano yung maganda? Pag-usapan, tignan natin yung proseso. Minsan yun yung mas mahalaga. 
yung process kaysa sa answer. If you go for Singapore math, I know some of you have been teaching math for a quite some time now. There are some schools in the Philippines adapting the Singaporean math. What you will notice with Singapore math, they are focusing more on the process more than the answer. It's not so much the answer that matters because when they learn the the subject late at uh, the process later on they can easily get the right answers. But for this particular suggestion, focus really on the process by providing the answer already in the beginning. Ano ang itsura niya? Next slide, please. My suggestion in the classroom is very similar to this. Kilala niyo siguro tong character na to. This is Conan, no? Detective Conan. Yeah, this is a very good um ano pa, pa pa heart sign nga sa mga Zoom participants kung kilala niyo si Conan, Detective Conan, pa heart nga po. Ayan, so kilala natin si Conan. Investigative, no? Um crime scene. Ang crime scene matagal nang ginagamit ng sciences if you will notice, no? As a lesson. Kasi yung mga experiments, scientific theories, ang gandang patunayan sa crime scene, eh, no? Pero alam nyo ba, hindi lang science ang pwedeng makinabang dyan. Mathematic, mathematics teachers, my dear teachers, you know, crime scenes approach is very much applicable for math. I'll tell you one very good example. Ito natutunan ko rin sa kapwa ko teacher, no? Um, shout out to Mr. Andy Ayuro, no? Fellow math teacher ko dati sa Assumption Antipolo. Mr. Andy Ayuro, meron siyang isang strategy dati, meron siyang uh, problem na presentation problem sa math. Ang ginagawa niya is may crime scene. Pag nanakaw, theft, forced entry. So, ibig sabihin, binasag ang bintana, pumasok sa loob ng kwarto. May footsteps ng sapatos. May mga marka. So, dahil investigation to, alam natin yung prior and alam natin yung ending. no? Alam natin yung krimen. Ang hindi natin alam, sinong gumawa ng krimen. Paano to naging math lesson? Kasi, na-identify kung sino yung possible suspects. Sabihin natin may sampung suspects. Okay, paano ngayon papasok si Matt dito? Di ba forced entry yan? So may nabasag na salamin. May pumasok na salamin, may buma nabasag na salamin, pumasok na tao. Ang crucial dito, ano ba ang height ng suspect? Yun, no? So may sampung tao. Ano-ano ang height nilang sampu? Yan. Kasi may silbi yan. Kung gaano kalaki yung naging damage dun sa may forced entry, gaano kalayo yung tinalsik ng mga uh, salamin. Another thing, yung size ng sapatos. Nag-iwan ng mark eh, yung size ng sapatos. Again, may number yan. Anong size ng paa ng suspect para sa size ng sapatos? Can you imagine the possible lessons na pwede natin dito? Depende sa level ng hawak nyo, no? Pwede tong statistics and probability. Nabasa ko kanina yung mga nagsulat ng statistics and probability. Napaka-appropriate. Meron kang sampung set ng data for height, sampung set ng data, sampung uh, data again for the uh, size ng paa. And then they will make correlations at titignan nila. Pwede rin to sa functions. no There are a lot of possible applications for this. Linear equation at one point, pwede rin. No? So, Maraming possibilities, pero ang mahalaga, you focus on the process. Kung mapapansin nyo, investigative approach. May dulo na yan, tsaka may simula. Ang wala, gitna. Yun yung mahalaga, investigatory. Okay? Next, let's go to uh, dilemma number three. Pangatlong dilemma ng math teachers, dahil pag nagtuturo tayo, madalas very procedural tayo. Babasahin muna natin, tapos identify ang given, magpapakita ng model, building models, no? isa sa lessons ng math, tapos tsaka isosolve at compute Very procedural. Step 1, step 2, step 3. Parang hagdan. Pero ang sinasabi dito ng inquiry-based approach, dapat relational. Parang puzzle. Pag nagbubuo ka ba ng puzzle, merong first step. Sinasabi ba dyan kung ano yung tamang unang, nam unang item na ipapakita mo? Hindi. Kahit saan pwede ka magsimula, ang mahalaga lang, alam mo kung ano yung silbi niya with the rest of the others. Okay? Anong silbi nito sa math? Please, uh, next slide please. Sabi dito, simpleng research lang to. Itong tinitignan natin ay story problem, word equation, at symbolic equation. Pare-pareho lang ang given dito. Kung mapapansin nyo dyan, pare-parehas lang yan. Pare-pareho lang ng gagawin, therefore. 
equation, word, tsaka story. Sa research, ilang beses na to sinubukan sa mga bata. Ano ang pinakamadaling sagutin sa kanila sa mga given na to? Considering pare-pareho lang to. Pare-pareho lang ng processes. Ano ang lumalabas sa research data? Ano ang pinakamadaling sagutin? Story, word, or symbol? Pakisagot sa chat box yung mga may, may suggestion, my dear teachers, please. St uh, symbols, word equation, or story equation? In the chat box, please. Ayan, kaparehas ko, my dear fellow teachers, nung una ko na-encounter to, yan din ang sagot ko, symbol. Kasi wala ka nang imi-misinterpret. 81.90 minus 66 all over uh, 6. Parang ang dali, di ba? Ang dali kung naintindihan natin yung divide. Ang dali kung naintindihan natin yung all over, yung parenthesis. Pero yun ang problema ng estudyante natin, di nila yung naintindihan. So ano ang resulta ng research nito? Ang pinakamadaling sagutan sa bata, yung story problem. Story problem ang pinakamadali. Pangalawa ang word, pangatlo ang symbolic. Bakit story problem ang pinakamadali? Kasi kahit hindi nila naiintindihan yung gagawin sa math, Dahil na-i-imagine nila kung ano yung gagawin sa actual life, na di nila, na gagawa nila, na susolve nila. Without the jar jargons of math. Anong, anong point ko sa suggestion number three? Focus on situations that give relevant context to the problem. Hindi laging, hindi laging equation, hindi laging formula. Minsan, Konteksto ang mahalaga, situation. Let's go to dilemma number four. Konti na lang po, lima lang po ito. Dilemma number four, reasoning versus computing. For the math teachers, napakasanay tayo, pabilisang mag-compute. Multiplication table, kabisado. Lahat ng uh, square, square, uh, square numbers, alam natin, kabisado. Hindi po yun ang goal ng math. Yung lahat ng tinuturo natin yun, kayang gawin ng calculator. Hindi ng bata. Ang kailangan ng bata, reasoning. Reasoning. Naiintindihan niya bakit yun ang kinocompute. Hindi pabilisang magcompute. So, anong itsura nito? Next, next slide, please. Anong itsura nito sa classroom? Let the students evaluate and compare various methods of solving problems. Pwede ba kayo magpa-essay sa math? Oo naman. Magpa-essay tayo sa math. Anong gagawin? May problema, may situation, may sagot. at merong apat na posibleng solution. Given na, anong gagawin nila? Pipili sila kung anong solution ang pinaka-best at pinaka-effective or efficient at ipapaliwanag nila kung bakit. Pwede ba tong math question? Formative or summative? Pwede! Again, focus on reasoning, not on computation. Again, for all levels, grade 1, preschool to senior high school, focus on Reasoning, not on computation. Let's go to dilemma number five. Dilemma number five, coverage versus problem solving. Marami sa math, mula sa lumang kurikulum hanggang sa bagong kurikulum, ang competencies naka, nakapasok bilang isang complete unit. Magbibigay ako ng halimbawa, computation ng area and perimeter. Ito ay napakalawak na topic. Parang ang simple lang, area, perimeter. Pero iba ang area... ang formula ng area at perimeter para sa circle. Iba sa square, iba sa triangle. Kaya ang lesson na to mahaba kasi magkakaiba pa yan ng lesson. No, iba-iba ng turo kasi iba-iba ng formula. Ang hirap niyan pag ganun ang approach mo, coverage. Anong sinasuggest ko? Approach it like a problem. Next slide, please. Ang approach natin, ba't hindi tayo magsimula sa problem? Parang problem-based, no? Magsimula ka bilang evacuation plan. Very relevant, kaka kakalindol lang lately. Pagawain natin ang bata ng uh, exit plan. Kung elementary yan, magsimula ka sa bahay para maliit. Kung high school yan, gawa kayo sa school para medyo malaki-laki yung school. Pag medyo senior high school na yan, pagawa kayo sa building, condominium, para complex. Anong gagawin? Gagawa lang sila ng exit plan sa building. pinakamalapit from each area kung paano makakalabas ng safely sa, sa, sa establishment. Pwede na ba yan, sir? Makukover na ba yan lahat ng lesson? Aba, oo naman. Bakit? Kahit quadro quantos ang establishment nyo, remember that the, that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Kaya definitely, kung gagawa ka ng exit plan dito, magkakaroon ka ng diagonal line. Kasi that's the fastest line. No? Diagonal. So may triangle ka kung may diagonal ka. 
So may triangle ka, may square ka na, may rectangle ka na. Kung exit plan 'yan. At definitely magko-compute sila ng area, magko-compute sila ng perimeter. Magpre-present ka ng problem, pero dadaanan nila lahat ng mga bagay na kailangan nilang matutunan kaysa mag-present ka ng coverage. Do you understand? It's a very very important approach. Dadaanan mo rin lahat ng lesson ng ko, ng ko, ng area at perimeter eh, sa iba-ibang shape. Lagyan mo yan ng circular staircase, lagyan mo ng rotonda, meron ka ng circle. Lahat na ng perimeter. Pero hindi mo present bilang ganon. Present mo siya bilang isang practical way to come up with an evacuation plan, very relevant sa panahon ngayon. That's an example. Therefore, I go to my last slide. Next slide please. Math is the only place where truth and beauty mean the same thing. Napakaganda, no? So I hope in your breakout rooms, you can continue the discussion. The dilemmas I have presented, discuss about it. Tama ba? Nag nagkakaroon ba tayo ng ganung pagtingin pag at pag 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 problema? At pag-usapan nyo yung mga suggestions. Suggestions lang yun. Baka may mas maganda pa kayong suggestion. And this is the hope of STEM Collab. So that's all for this afternoon for me. Thank you very much. I hope you have questions, you have ideas to share. Thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Miss Ina. Dami kong nanot, Sir Noel. Di ko naman yun inexpect. Sobrang maraming salamat. And I think, hindi lang na-clarify yung tanong about inquiry base, nadagdagan pa yung knowledge namin about it. Maraming maraming salamat for the practical tips. Kasi di ba yun yung hinahanap ng teachers ngayon, yung easy, um, parang easy open task para sa mga students. Um, I like how you mentioned that we have to focus on actual data, you also mentioned how the kids these days needs reasoning other than them telling you the correct answer. So para din makapag-isip sila, critical thinking, pwede bang magpa-essay sa math? Pwedeng pwede. Thank you for that affirmation. O math teachers, alam nyo na yung gagawin sa next exam nyo, ha? or next formative or summative assessment. But my favorite of all is when you've mentioned that truth and beauty means the same thing in mathematics. Ganda nun. Ipapaboard ako yon sa aking throw pillow. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Noel. Um, I'm sure the participants have questions for you.
kung paano nila maririnig ito, di ba? But um, hopefully, we have a way to record. This is recording and we can share this um, content to the teachers who are watching. Yes. Meron tayo yes. ditong mga tanong. Yes, please. Um, what are the specific rules ng teachers that they can play in an inquiry-based lesson. Kasi di ba, sabi natin yung mga teachers, ang daming hats that they wear. Are they facilitators? Are they uh, moderators? Ano ba talaga yung specific role nila na pwedeng gawin in an inquiry-based lesson? In an inquiry-based approach talaga, technically speaking, they, they will become a facilitator talaga. It's because uh, their role is to make the students go on or deal with the, with the question in mind. Kaya nga yung mga approaches na nagpe-present ng problems, na nagpe-present ng, ng uh, controversy or discussion point, these are all recommended for um, inquiry-based approach because the, the goal of the teacher in the classroom, of an inquiry-based classroom, is just to motivate the students to investigate, to observe, to pay attention to details, and choose the appropriate learnings that they need to get. So, dapat hindi ikaw ang magsasabi kung ano yung dapat nilang aralin. Yun yung ibig sabihin, kaya facilitator ka. Kasi kung ikaw ay, ay lecturer, ikaw ang magsasabi, eto ang aaralin nyo. Yung discussion ko kanina about coverage and problem, that captures somehow the rules. Kasi hindi mo ibibigay sa kanila yung lessons as a covered uh, topic or topics. Pero ipapresent mo yung problem kung saan kakailanganin nila yung mga skills na yon. Whether they like it or not, they will learn that because it's necessary for the problem to solve. So yun yung goal ng inquiry-based approach. You become a facilitator of learning. You are not the one directing the students on what they need to study or learn. Instead, you are guiding them towards the right questions, the right problems, and the right direction. Yun po, Miss uh, Ina. Ang ganda nun. Like, I want to reiterate, no? teachers are there to teach the students how to learn and yes. not what to learn. Diba? Very good, Miss Ina. Very yes. Good. Natutuwa ko talaga kapag nag-very good ako. Maraming salamat, Sir Noel. I think our audio is back on Facebook, no? If yes. you have questions for Sir Noel, ibato nyo lang po yan sa akin para maitanong na natin. Let's make the most out of this STEM collab interaction with a well-sought speaker. Ang dami ko talagang na notes while Sir Noel was talking about inquiry-based um, teaching. Again, these are very practical that I can use right away. Bukas na bukas din. Gagamitin natin yan. Uh, meron pa tayong question dito. Um, what type of questions promote inquiry-based learning? Sir Noel, go ahead. Okay. What types of questions? Kung kayo yung nasa classroom, ang questions nyo dapat should be directed towards the students. Halimbawa, sa mga situations, ang mga tanong mo sa kanila, what are you observing? Whether you're presenting data, you're presenting a situation, or you're making them look at the natural environment, what are your observations? Yan. Tapos, pa-evaluative din. What do you think are missing? Or what, what is wrong in this particular situation? In an inquiry-based approach, you are helping the students ask the question. Hindi mo tinatanong sila so that they will give you an answer. No, you are asking them to come up with relevant questions. No? So, ako, ako, ang general suggestion ko when it comes to questioning your students, it is a question always giving them the perspective. Instead of telling them that this, this is what is wrong. For example, nag-solve na kayo sa board. Tapos may problem doon or may missing item. Hindi ikaw bilang teacher ang magsasabing may mali. You have to let the students, train the students to have an eye for the mistake. So, ikaw ang magtatanong sa kanila, ano sa tingin nyo ang problematic or what is missing in this particular solution or situation? Kung hindi pa rin nila makuha sa ganun, let them compare. Go back to my previous example yesterday. Comparing this particular uh, computation with the example yesterday, what do you think is the difference? Those types of questions are very practical because you are making the students pay attention. 
to where you want them to pay attention to. So, hindi ikaw yung magsasabing, tumingin kayo dito. Ito yung dapat gawin dyan. Gone are the days that math teachers would do that. In, in an inquiry-based approach, we help the students go into the right question, ask the right questions, ask the clarificatory questions. Yan po. Thank you. Ang ganda, ang ganda non Sir Noel. What I'm getting is that you want the students to have ownership of the learning yes. by putting them or by giving them the cons context and letting them realize kung ano ba itong dapat isolve. At kung nasolve nila dahil na scaffold mo ang mga tanong, unti-unti mo silang tinatanong, hindi yung anong sagot agad-agad. Baka pwedeng anong sunod nating gagawin. Yon. Diba? Kasi nakaka-pressure sa math, uh, di ba? Anong sagot? Diba? Isa pa nga, for the math teachers, tandaan po natin to ha, hindi po laging tamang sagot ang hinahanap. Minsan, sa maling sagot, wag mong, wag mong bitawan. Kasi dun sa maling sagot nila, malalaman mo kung anong learning gap nila. Correct. Uh, by asking them, why did you arrive at this answer? Why did you use this computation? Why did you use this formula? What were you thinking? That's a very specific question in inquiry-based. What were you thinking when you were doing this? So, hindi importante na tama lang yung sagot. Minsan, sa maling sagot, it's still a teaching point for you. Kasi bakit sila umabot sa ganong maling sagot? Yan. Ang ganda nun. That's very nice, no, sir? But before that, I think it's very important that math teachers also provide safe spaces for students to make mistakes. Yes. Kasi definitely. lagi natin dapat pinapaalala sa mga students na mistakes help us learn. At nakuha yes. ko yun sa sinabi mo kanina na yes. hawakan natin yung maling sagot para yes. mas matandaan nila. Ayan. Yes. Maraming maraming salamat. Sobrang insightful noon. ba diba, Sir Noel? Maraming salamat po sa inyong input. At um, I think tuloy-tuloy itong conversation natin sa ating Facebook group. Kaya naman, kung hindi pa kayo kasali sa ating STEM Collab Facebook group, sumali na po kayo. At doon, pwede kayong makipag-interact with other math teachers. Part ka ba ng group, Sir Emmanuel? Part ka yes, ba Yes naman po, of course. So I can also ah? share my insights. Yes po, I am. Okay, so while we're at it, I would like to invite all teachers to please share this learning on your Facebook pages at itag ang Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. Huwag po nating hayaan na ang learnings ay tumigil lamang sa atin. I-share natin po yan sa iba. And while that is happening, I think most of our participants from the breakout sessions are coming back from the main session. Yan, nabitin ba ulit? Mga teachers, ayan, parang nakangiti sila. Nakakatuwa kapag nakangiti yung mga teachers, no, Sir Noel? Totoo nga naman. Kasi sabi nga nila, you learn better when there is fun. Totoo Correct. naman yun. You learn better when it's fun. Tama yun. Now, Sir Noel, maraming maraming salamat po. Hindi ko alam kung paano kita thank ng super but if you're watching live on Facebook, padalhan nyo lang po kami ng heart reaction. I-type sa, sa comment section ang mga natutunan nyo from Sir Noel, um, ang ating speaker for uh, teaching inquiry-based um, topics in math. You can also type your key learnings and what did you like most about the program. Ang dami kong sagot nito. Sir Noel, i-email uh, talaga kita ng mga natutunan ko, di ba? Maraming salamat, Miss Ina. Yes. Ito, ang dami nating comments in the, um, in the, on Facebook Live, no? Sabi ni Joe Sender, Ang hirap pa sa'yo, but I'll try. Sabi niya, students must be keen observer and apply the seven C's. Oh, very valuable input. Sabi naman ni Miss Ninette, I think this refers to the sharing a while ago. Very nice approach. ba? Mayroon din tayong uh, mga questions dito. Ah, nag-aabang na ang mga science teachers natin. Malapit na po tayong matapos at alam ko excited na kayo. Ay, ang ganda rin nung sinabi ni Ma'am Rose Lily. 
from Sullivan National High School, there should always be a justification and mistakes help us learn. Ang gaganda ng mga key learnings nila. At favorite daw nila yung use of inquiry approach. Very helpful yung practical tips mo, Sir um, Noel. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Now, our discussion will continue through our FB group, STEM Collab. Pinapaalalahanan ko po ang lahat na kung hindi pa kayo nakakasali, sali na. Join the group to be able to join the conversation, access the materials, and get a chance to win prizes. Yes! Feedback form will be posted in the STEM Collab Facebook group. Okay, please answer the form to receive a certificate of attendance. Doon nyo po makukuha ang inyong certificate. You may also receive a certificate of completion equivalent to 8 hours if you share this session with your colleagues through an LAC or LAC session in your schools. Dagdag din yan para doon sa mga magpapa-renew um, ng license, CPD units, di ba? Again, we thank our resource speaker for this afternoon. Tumataas yung boses ko kapag ang dami kong natutunan at excited ako. Maraming maraming salamat sa'yo, Sir Noel. The, the honor is mine, Miss Ina. Maraming salamat. At uh, ito ay para sa ating mga kaguruan. No? So, sana may mapulot kayo at sana i-share ninyo. No? Continue learning, continue growing. Simpleng-simple lang yung binahagi namin sa inyo dito. No? Maiksi lang yung oras. Pero kayo yung magpapayaman nito by by making it your own, adjusting it to your own context, adding your flavor, and sharing it with other teachers as well. Yun ang goal ng STEM Collab. Sana gawin po natin. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po. Tandaan mga kaguruan, tayo ang magpapayaman ng ating mga natutunan. Maraming salamat ulit, Sir Noel. You or he will also be part of our STEM Collab community in Facebook. So huwag niyo po siyang mamimiss, okay? Our conversation continues in the STEM Collab Facebook group. See you there and have a wonderful afternoon, math teachers. You may now leave the Zoom call to make room for the science teachers. Again, for the math teachers, you may now exit the Zoom room as we now open the room for science teacher for another round of the STEM Collab for Science Teachers. Maraming salamat po sa inyo! Thank you! Thank you po! GBF offers the Teach STEM Scholarship for aspiring and in-service teachers. Science and math educators teaching any level in deaf ed schools or in tertiary schools may apply to any of the four programs under Teach Them, delivered through our partner institutions. Reach your dream of becoming a math or science teacher through a college scholarship. Strengthen your knowledge and competencies through a master's degree in science math education. Acquire teaching units and become a professional teacher through the Teacher Certificate Program. Complete your master's degree with a grant for your thesis or capstone project. Scholars receive an annual financial grant and access to scholar development programs. Upon completion, they serve as math and science educators in deaf ed or higher education institutions. Apply now to the Teach STEM Scholarship Program and be a STEM champion. Let's build the future today. Tara! Teach STEM na!
watchers who are here and Zoom and those who are watching live via Facebook, we welcome you to the National Science and Technology Fair 2022 breakout session for science teachers. Hello, this is hosted by the Gohongwei Brothers Foundation. I am Ina Salazar and by day I teach tiny human beings and in my free time I handle a small non-government organization called Love Education Philippines that aims to spread love through teaching and reading. And I will be your host for this afternoon. Now for the past 30 years, the Gokongwei Brothers Foundation, or the GBF, has dedicated itself to its mission of building the future through education. GBF believes that at the heart of the future of education are, well, are our educators, tayong mga guro. So we're very eager to collaborate and be with our teachers coming from all over the Philippines today. Ayan. Mayroon na nga tayong mga um, participants from all over the Philippines. Tingnan nga natin sa Facebook Live and here on Zoom. Please tell me where you're from and your name so that I can give you a shout-out. ba? Very important yan, mga shout-out natin. Okay, magandang hapon po, Ms. Nin, uh, Sir Nino Esquilona. Um, si Miss Mira Luna Dawa, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Watching from SDO Batangas, Mary Diana Maulion. Miss Tess Yapo from SDO QC Santa Lucia High School. Meron din po tayo from Iloilo. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at kagaya ng nangyari sa ating STEM collab sa math. I'm sure madami din po tayong matututunan dito. Kaya naman, ihanda nyo na ang inyong mga notebooks at papel or notebooks at ballpen para makapag-take notes naman kayo sa ating very renowned speaker na si Dr. Rolando Mamaya. But let's get to know more about the Gokongwei Brothers Foundation um, and its scholarship program through this video. Roll video! GBF offers the GBF teach them offers the teach for them scholarship and for aspiring and in service teachers. Science and math educators, and math educators, and educators teaching any level in depth at schools or in tertiary schools, may apply to any of the four programs that will teach them, them. Our delivered through our partner institutions. Through our partner institutions. Reach your dream of becoming a Reach math, your dream science, of becoming teacher a math or science teacher through a college scholarship. Strengthen your knowledge and competencies, Strengthen your knowledge and competencies through a master's degree in science, math, math, education. Degree in science, math education. Acquire teaching units Acquire and become a professional teacher, teacher, a professional teacher, teacher through, certificate through program. a teacher certificate program. Complete your master's degree Complete with a your master's degree with a Build the Ta-da. future today. Teach them, Ta-da. Teach them na. Tara, teach them na. So whether you are a college, a master student, a waiting for your teacher certificate program, or looking for a master research grant. Mag-apply na po tayo dito. Kanina nung inexplain sa akin, parang mapapa-apply na ako eh. You have until August 31, 2022 to apply. So for our aspirant and in-service teachers, make sure to apply to Teach STEM Scholarship today. But did you know that apart from the scholarship opportunities, GBF also offers STEM collab 
as part of its capacity building program for teachers. And that is what we have in store for you. Kaya mamaya, let's make the most out of the interactions that we'll be having with our teachers. I read somewhere that we can produce quality inputs or quality works if we are collaborating. So, anjan, meron tayo from Nueva Ecija, meron tayo from La Union, from Cebu City, Region 7. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. And we have a variety of um, variety of teachers from all over the Philippines. Now, ano ba yung STEM Collab? STEM Collab is both a community and capacity building program for teachers of science, technology, engineering, or math who teach in K-12 private or public schools. It uses open space technology and social learning to provide an open and safe space for teachers to share insights, best practices, or even ways to overcome the challenges in the classroom about a specific topic. In this session, we'll give you a taste of this new learning experience through the topic, Teaching Science Through Inquiry. Ayan, yan yung topic natin for this afternoon. But before we move forward, please make sure that you are part of the STEM Collab Facebook page. Baka ma-FOMO kayo, ang daming learning dyan. We will post the activity links there. And very important, the feedback form that you have to accomplish after this session to get, of course, your certificate of attendance. Let me just remind also everyone that STEM Collab is an open and safe space for teachers. Hindi lang kailangan students ang may safe spaces. So we encourage everyone to interact and keep in mind that in the activities and in the discussion, we have to participate well. As we do that, Use kind words and keep in mind the value of respect when interacting. So yung mga nasa Zoom, turn on your camera so that they can see your beautiful faces and unmute your microphones. Again, the mechanics are join the Facebook group, listen to the speakers and participate during our breakout and Facebook group social social learning. So yung mga nanonood dyan sa Facebook, di ko po kayo makakalimutan. I-type nyo lang po ang inyong learnings dyan. Okay? Now, alam ko, ito yung inaabangan nating lahat. Let me introduce to you our resource speaker for today. He is a licensed professional teacher who has a teaching experience in both high school and college. He has taught college-level science subjects at the De La Salle University and Trinity College. He also taught high school science at the Southeastern College and Makati Hope Christian School. He has an extensive experience in conducting training and other professional development programs for teachers. Ayan, kaya sure tayo na we're in good hands. He completed his Bachelor of Science degree in Public Health at the UP Manila, and obtained his Master's of Masters of Arts in Education, major in Biology Education in UP Diliman College of Education. He is currently Chair of UP NITSMED Elementary Science School Group. Zoom participants, Facebook Live viewers, tulungan niyo po akong i-welcome si Mr. Rolando M. Tan. Magandang hapon po, sir. Good afternoon din and I think it's a pleasure na ano no, kahit pa paano nagkaroon ulit ako ng opportunity uh, to reach out to our teachers right now, especially ngayon ano napakahirap talaga kaming napakahirap sa amin sa NISMED na magkaroon ng mga ganitong mga professional development programs dahil nami-miss din namin yung actual face-to-face -face, no, na pagte-training and yung mga on-site namin where we we went as far as Mindanao, maabot kami doon even uh, sa Coronadal, sa Iligan, no? So namimiss din namin 'yun, ano? So kahit paano in this uh, uh, in this event, in this occasion, uh, kahit sa ganito, kahit paano makapag-reach out at somehow makatulong, no, sa mga teachers na nag-struggle ngayon during this pandemic, no. Uh, I suppose I have to start na or ayan, yeah, okay. Um I think hindi yan yung PowerPoint, the other one. I think it's the other one yata. Uh, baka, 
that's that's for the activity yata. Ah, uh, kindly use the other one. Uh, yeah, sir, while we're waiting no, for your PowerPoint, uh, binabasa ko pa lang po yung inyong um, credentials parang inaabangan ko na kung ano yung matututunan ko this afternoon. And I hope the teachers are also prepared with their writing material. Sir, meron po ba kayong ipapasagot na mahirap sa amin mamaya para makapag-ready kami ng onte? <laughs> um, ano naman yun? Um, somehow, dun sa ano, dun sa, ito, ito papresent ko sa PowerPoint, uh, bali may apply nyo yung ano, yung mga mga essential features of inquiry. Kaya yan ang pamagat ng aking ano eh, no? uh, teaching science through inquiry, more on science no kasi kanina match yung ano eh, no? So merong merong something unique about ano no, the inquiry in the science context no. So let's go to the next slide. Yan, features of an inquiry based lesson yan. So how do you know no kung ang lesson mo ay inquiry based? Okay. So the United States National Research Council sa ano no, yan. Uh, product to ng current na mga ano uh, na mga past na mga research nila no starting from the curriculum reform movement ng 1960s pa hanggang present no nabuo nila to no and they're able to come up with these five essential features of inquiry no na dapat sana na, nagre-reflect sa mga science lesson first one is uh, sige paki ano na paki yan learner engages in scientifically oriented questions no the second one is learner gives priority to evidence no number three, learner formulates explanation from evidence number four, learner evaluates their explanations in light of alternative explanations particularly those reflecting scientific understanding a uh, may shorter version yan learner connects his explanation to scientific understanding no okay masyado mahaba eh no? pero yan yung original and the number five is learner communicates and justifies their proposed explanations okay so let's go to the next no uh, let's uh, next slide uh, ipapaliwanag natin isa isa yan no okay so ano ba tong in scientifically oriented questions no can we uh, put up the ano the text uh, yan so ito yung, these questions are questions about objects organisms events in the natural world okay natural world lang no Okay, and are connected to science concepts. Ito tinutukoy nilang scientifically oriented questions. And these are also the questions that lead to empirical investigation. So when we say empirical investigation, meron tayong kailangan mga paggather ng data, no? And using certain data, no? Uh, using this data to for explaining scientific phenomena. Okay, let's go to the next, no? So let's see some examples no so yeah for example no uh, how do we inhale and exhale yan how does light help us see things no so yan yung mga uh, pwedeng ma-investigate ma no okay so usually merong mga misconception ng ano akala ng iba dapat laging yung student ang nagbibigay ng tanong eh minsan wala wala naman tanong yung mga student so in the first place pwedeng ikaw muna ang mag-post ng question kaya questions can either come from the teachers or the learners no okay so siguro do sa mga Q&A baka pwede kong isa you know further elaborate pa yan kasi i think limited yung time natin you know okay so yan no? scientifically oriented questions yan does air have weight how does light help us see things how do we inhale and exhale pwede mo maimbestiga pwede mo ma-measure pwede mo ma pwede kang makakuha ng data from there no okay let's go to the next ayan it has to give priority to evidence no so for grade school, use of an actual evidence of a science phenomenon is appropriate, no? So yung mga examples sa mga evidence when you're teaching seed germination, uh, dapat nakakakita talaga sila ng totoong nag-germinate na seed, no? Okay, kung natuturo ka ng sounds, di magparinig ka ng sounds, di ba? Huwag ka magpakita ng dalawang picture, no? Na uh, alin dito sa dalawang picture na to ang 
palagay yung maingay, no? Eh picture pinapakita mo, visual tapos ang lesson mo sounds. <laughs> so dapat magparinig ka ng sounds, di ba? Then growth of plants, no? So they measure the height of plants, no? Clouds in the sky, they examine the sky, no? Okay? So actual evidence. Okay, let's go to the next. Yan. So ayan, tulad niyan, ano? When you when you teach the ano, when you teach a lesson on sounds, 'di ba? Meron tayo sa grade 3, no? Na uh, describe sources of sounds, 'di ba? Ayan. So magparinig tayo ng sound, 'di ba? O pwede tayong we allow them, no, to make a sound, no? Like for example, identifying the object based on the sound produced. Gagawa ka ng parang mystery ano, mystery game, no? Papa, papahulaan mo sa kanila anong object yung dumili ka ng sound na 'yan. No, comparing the pitch of the sound tulad nung nakikita niyo yung picture diyan ano uh, nagiiba-iba yung pitch ng bote pag pinupukpok niya sa gilid no nung bata relating the loudness of sound based on the distance of the source from the listener and investigating the loudness in pitch of sound that can be changed no okay so merong mga ano no nagiiba-iba yung mga mga task no and at the same time nagii-improve yung kanyang ano understanding about sources of sound no okay Let's have ano, the next. Yan. Learner formulates explanation based on evidence. No? Okay, from the table. No? So, <coughs> excuse. So I think pwede ito sa ano. No? If you're teaching kung senior high school ano, ka, stud, senior high school uh, teacher, meron yata ang simple harmonic motion sa, sa STEM, no? sa physics. No? So yan, you, you vary the... Ano, so this is a pen, pendulum. No? And then... You vary the length of the string, and then you count the number of swings, swings, no, that was formed in one minute, no. So, makita natin nagbabago siya, no. So, we can make the quest. You can make the student, no, formulate his explanation based on evidence by making them, ano, making them answer this question. What can be said about the length of the string and the movement of the pendulum, no? So. From there, no, they can say na mas dumadami yung swings habang umiikli yung string, no. So, kailangan nila talagang gamitin yung data, no, para makaano, para masagot yan. So, they they can make an explanation that the shorter the the length of the string, the faster the pendulum swings, no. So, hindi mo hindi mo nila mapoform yung kundi mo papakita ng ng data, no. Okay, so yun ang magandang ano, no. They make them explain, no, ah by based on evidence, no. So nakita natin may flow no nagsimula sa question tapos nagbigay ka ng priority sa evidence sa evidence nagformulate ka ng explanation. So, susunod number four, yung next ano next ayan. Ito yung pang-apat no. Ah uh, pinaikli ko na lang yan eh yung ano learner connects his explanation to scientific understanding. Yan yung shorter version. Masyado mahaba kasi yan, yan yung original eh. Learner evaluates their explanation in light of alternative explanation particularly those reflecting scientific understanding. So kino-connect lang niya yung explanation sa scientific understanding. So let's have a grade 9 lesson, no? Uh, actually kamay ko 'yan eh. <laughs> so I I did this data gathering gathering ko sa grade 9. Uh, kasi 'di ba ang lesson sa ano sa grade 9 biology is respiratory and circulatory system. So we had a dissection of a mammalian heart, no? yung puso ng baboy ang ginamit ko dito. Okay, so I made them answer that question. Because we had some past lessons before. They've already known what the systemic circulation, what the pulmonary circulation, what the parts of the heart that are responsible for systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation. And then, when we did the dissection of the heart, Ayan, I made them answer that. No, compare the muscles of the right ventricle and the left ventricle. No, so why do you think the muscles of their muscle? Why do you think the thickness of their muscles are not the same? Because I was pointing at the left ventricle. No, if you're wondering why the left ventricle is on the left, because I'm I'm dissecting from the dorsal side, hindi yung nasa libro na nasa ventral side. No, okay, so yon. So kaya makikita dito makapal yung ano no. Ah, if you compare, mas makapal yung yung left ventricle. Eh, yun yung turo ko kaysa dun sa right ventricle na na muscle. So they make them ano no uh, connect their uh, uh, their explanation ano sa mga ano sa mga scientific understanding kasi yung left ventricle ang scientific understanding diyan siya yung responsible sa systemic circulation which means it has to pump blood no throughout the whole body 
Samantalang yung right ventricle, biyahing ano lang, biyahing baga lang, no? Sa baga lang siya. Kaya maliit lang yung muscle niyan. It needs less force, no? Kumpara sa left. So pagka nasagot nila 'yon, no? They were able to connect, no? Their ano no, their uh, explanation to an existing scientific understanding. And that's good, no? Na, Nagko-connect connect kasi in conceptual understanding to, to allow them to have conceptual understanding, kailangan may mga connection ng iba-ibang concept at hindi compartmentalize ang un- learning, no? Okay, let's have the fifth one. Okay, so they communicate and justifies their explanation. Okay, so this is a grade uh, sa ano to, no? How light helps us see things, no? Okay, so from there, no? Uh, mer- merong box doon and inside the box, there's a modeling play. Then may butas na ibabaw ng box and then the, the kid is looking at the side hole, no? Sa so dalawa yung hole. There's a top hole kung saan nakapatong yung flashlight and then there's a boy peeping at the ano no peeping pangit pa rin <laughs> ah, looking no at the side hole no okay so nakikita niya ngayon yung ano yung modeling clay sa loob pag pinatay yung flashlight talagang pitch black no wala siyang makita so we made them ano no i made them uh, uh, trace no uh, i-drawing yung path ng light no na nakatulong sa kanya para makita yan ano so from there na, na- construct niya yung tamang understanding no that The reflected light is the one that enters the eye and the reflected eye helps him see the object inside the ano inside the box no so uh, yung pagdo-drawing hindi laging ano uh, yung pag sinabi natin communicate hindi laging nagsasalita o nagsusulat pwede ring din drawing no and then you ask them uh, ano ibig sabihin ng drawing baka mamaya kinopya lang niya yun sa amin <laughs> sa kasama niya matalino no So kailangan tanungin mo siya yon. So i-justify niya yung kanyang explanation. Di ba? Okay, so let's have another one. The next slide. Ayan, ayan pala. Learners communicate. Ah, paki ano nga? Ayun. Ayun, yung sinabi ko, how light helps them see the object by drawing arrows. Okay, let's have the next uh, next slide. Ayun. Okay, so I ha- I even tried out a lesson ano that uses inquiry based instruction. Okay. So sa isang class na to sa isang public school, ito yung kanyang, ito yung description ng ano no. Usually this class only receives instruction through traditional instruction, yung lecture, lecture, puro ano lang no. So hindi sila talaga ano uh, prepared kung tutuusin ano. And they are the low achieving students. Sinanap ko kasi, sabi ko so, dun sa ano, sa principal tsaka dun sa ano, dun sa teacher, kailangan ko yung ano, yung hindi hindi matalino, yung hindi ano, hindi top section no na ano parang second to the last yata to or last yeah, to remember na no okay so yun ang hinanap ko noon no? so okay let's go to the next next slide okay so sounds yung ano ko dito yan okay sige okay lang ilabas na natin lahat yung ano okay so i had i presented them two identical bottles with equal amounts of water okay and then i asked them to tap the ano no the the bottle with a spoon on the sides no Okay so nakita nila pareho yung tunog no uh, pagkare pareho ng ano no so i asked them how can one bottle produce a higher pitch than the other when struck with a spoon on the side so by that no we were able to highlight the uh, first ano no we make them engage no in, in a scientifically oriented question no and then you we, we made them ano no discover no paano nila babaguhin yung pitch no so from there they, they have to uh, They have to. They will elicit from this activity. It will elicit three, at least three. No, learner gives priority to evidence. Because they need to test, eh, di ba? They need to test. If they have a bad one, it will be more likely to be one of the ones in a bottle. Learner formulates explanation from evidence. So, so they're in their mind. While they're trying to figure out, they have thought. I think the amount of water has something to do with it. They're in their mind. Ngayon kapag ka naisip na niyang ah, baguhin natin yung tubig, either they pour the water on the sink kasi nasa lab sila nito para mas konti yung isa o kaya nilipat nila yung tubig do sa isang bote para mas marami yung isa kaysa do sa isa. No? And then they try to test it, no? So when you ask them, ano yung ano, no? O paano niyo ginawa? Ano anong ginawa niyo iyon? So they try to ano. No? So paano niyo napatunayan na by changing the ano, no? na nagbago nga yung pitch, no? So they have to test it, no? papapakita nila na yung mas marami tubig mas mababa ang tunog kaysa doon sa mas konti. In fact, doon sa actual tryout, ayan sinabi ko nga diyan, it took them a lot of time, siguro mga 20 minutes bago nila na diskubre, no? Na they have to change the amount of water, no? 
So ganun talaga kasi ano to eh medyo low achieving ano to no na, na class no. Para dapat sinatiyaga natin. We don't uh, we don't ano lose our patience na sige na nga ako na nga sabihin ko na nga sa inyo. <laughs> Wag ganun hayaan natin no. We, we let them ano. Okay. So meron meron pa ring naka ano naka naka figure out and then later on the rest of the class were able to figure it out na. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, no? so yung apat na yon nakita natin ano. Okay. So yung susunod na activity, ayan ano, they have four bottles na at iba-iba yung tubig, no? Iba-iba yung amount ng water, no? So we arrange the four bottles in increasing pitch, no? Okay, and then they number the bottles with one as the lowest pitch and four as the highest pitch. Okay, so mayroon pang drawing yun. No? They have to draw how the bottles are arranged and be able to explain the drawing. No? So from there, mayroon tayong pang-apat. Yung learner evaluates his explanation in light of alternative explanation, particularly those that reflect scientific understanding. Yan yung number four. Okay, kasi bakit? No? Uh, may understanding na siya doon sa activity no? na nalaman niya na Ah, pag konti pa lang yung tubig, mas mataas. Pagka marami, mas mababa. Siguro kung dadamihan pa natin yung tubig, lalong bababa. Siguro kung kukontian. So nagkaroon siya ng ano, nagamit niya yun, ano, yung scientific understanding na yun. Kaya na, na ano niya, no, nai-arrange niya, no? Nai-arrange niya yung ano, no? so na-evaluate niya muna yung explanation sa isip niya. And then he communicated his explanation, ano? Yan, through a drawing, no? So four and five features no are promoted in this ano no in this latter part of the lesson no okay so they number the bottles no okay so i think meron yatang actual na ano yan can you have the next slide ayan tulad niyan ano uh, nagawa ng ano no so this is an actual ano no uh, actual result nung nung mga bata no so they arrange the bottles from the lowest to the highest pitch and labeled it high no highest yung bottle na ano no and lowest yung yung merong lowest pitch no so ayan mga science process skills na ano diyan meron siyang classifying skills no ah uh, syempre may observing din kasi inag, pinakikinggan din nila eh tinetest din nila yung sound no kung mababa ba yung 1 at mas mataas ba yung 2 mas mataas ba yung 3 kaya sa 2 and 1 at pinakamataas ba yung 4 so may observing and as well as classifying skills because arranging the bottles from lowest to highest is also considered a classifying skill no Okay, so makikita natin meron din siyang mga science process skills that are involved there, no? Okay, so let's have the next. Okay, nagkaroon nga ba ng learning, no? Okay, so actually nagkaroon muna ako ng ano, diyan pre-test and post-test, no? So makikita nyo, um, 10 items 'yan eh, pero makikita nyo pat ang baba no, 3.41, 4.45. Usually wala akong tanong diyan na recall. Wala akong tanong na recall diyan. Tapos pangalawa, ano pa 'yan, no? Uh, low achieving 'to. And this is the first time na hindi sila ni lecturean di parang na-realize nila ako pala dapat ang ano ako pala dapat ang responsible sa learning ko parang biglang na ano sila no <laughs> na, na ano pero nakita natin ano ang mean difference niya no uh, registered a p value that is 0.05 no which means it is uh, it is significant no so the learning took place no kaya sinabi ko diyan learning took place despite the pupils inadequacy of science process skills as well as ano no as well as the inadequacy of exposure to inquiry based learning no let's have the next okay may mga realizations ako do sa try out no na so ayan inquiry skills must be emphasized more than just memorizing science terms and definitions no responses must be studied no yung pupils responses yan ang mga ano uh, yan din yung sinabi ko sa previous webinar ko last ano yun, last june no uh, under ano yon sa aming uh, sa aming institute no So they, they must be studied para makita mo bakit ganoon ang sagot nila. Baka may problema sa ating tanong, baka may problema sa ating activity, baka mayroong misconception tayong ano na kaya siguro dapat ano. So we have to uh, study no the responses to see how children think and what science process skills need to be enhanced, no? Okay, next ano, next uh, slide. Okay, so ayan ano, so implying no, so meron tayong ano nakikita rito na merong learning na nangyayari no so if i may quote gal no although napakaluma na niyang ano pero mukhang relevant pa rin siya no sabi niya kasi dito if a group of students is exposed to certain types of questions and if their responses are monitored to improve their quality rather than correctness tingnan muna natin nag-iimprove ba kahit medyo hindi pa ano 
magandang maganda yung ano pero may improvement at least much better siya kaysa dati no ayan then they will be able to answer similar types of questions better than a group of students who have not had this uh, exposure so continuous exposure no will lead to improvement no okay so hindi hindi ano hindi overnight yan ah magmula ngayon inquiry based na ako magtuturo you won't expect right away no na na you get the ano the immediate results no kaya, kaya sabi niya exposure eh. importante yung exposure okay let's have another one okay. na next slide ayan so yung drawings no they, they are powerful tools in unraveling children's mental representations especially for children who have poor communication skills no so it, this was even recognized by Piaget no okay na meron tong ano important kasi ang drawing na nakakatulong yan para ma-reveal ko ano yung kanilang uh, pin, iniisip no okay let's have the next slide okay meron ding mga misconception ayan diyan muna tayo no sa inquiry but i have to ano no uh, i have to highlight na lang yung dalawa no ito tulad ito yung nasa gitna inquiry based instruction can be easily implemented through the use of hands-on activities and educational kits no so misconception yan kasi hindi naman laging hands-on no merong mga times na hindi mo kailangan may minamanipulate na gamit no para lang mapalabas na hands-on even if you provided them with data gathered data no okay meron yung ano pwede pa rin tayong magkaroon ng inquiry no okay the other one is yung the, the one on the ano, upper left no yan inquiry based instruction is the application of the scientific method so misconception yan no hindi porke hindi ka nag-apply ng scientific method hindi na inquiry based ang lesson mo hindi hindi ho no uh, if you uh, maybe if you remember your high school ano no yung sa scientific method you start with a problem and then you try to formulate hypothesis you test your hypothesis uh, then you make a generalization no so hindi laging ganun yung step no no sa sa ano no para maging inquiry based pwedeng hindi hindi gaya pero hindi ko sinasabing ano no hindi mo gagamitin ang scientific method ibig ibig lang natin sabihin uh, mayroong mga activities no invest science science investigations na kahit hindi gumamit ng scientific method inquiry based pa din okay so yan yung ano no yung dalawa ko na lang na highlight no so kasi mukhang kukulangin ng oras tayo no okay let's have the next ano uh, next slide yan Okay, so yung actual definition ng NRC, dalawa kasing ano, two-pronged yan. Ano? Yung gawain ng mga scientists at saka yung sa, sa thinking learning process. Yung first part, sinabi ng NRC, no? yung scientific inquiry refers to the diverse ways in which scientists study the natural world and propose explanation based on evidence derived from their work. Ayan. So yan yung gawain talaga, yung disiplina ng, ng scientists. No? Okay, and then... In second part, sinasabi rin niya na yung inquiry is a teaching approach, no? Ayan, it refers to the activity stud per students, no? Uh, activity of students in which they develop knowledge and understanding of scientific idea, no? As well as an understanding of how scientists study the natural world. So, ginagawa ng estudyante, no, yung disiplina ng ng scientist, no? Yung kanilang disiplina para matutunan yung mga akan konsepto no sa ano sa, sa classroom so dalawa yung ano no dalawa siya na paraan ano para ipaliwanag okay so yung inquiry uh, ito yung current na ano namin tinitindigan sa UP National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development no uh, ito yung aming ano uh, pwede namin masabing ano pedagogical content knowledge or PCK namin no yung kaparaan na pagtuturo ng mga angkop na ano no? na sub subject matter lalo na sa science no okay so ito yung aming pinaka ano let's say this ano pa yung next slide ko i think ano lang yata yan these are some of the references no okay so i suppose uh, i made i cut it short kasi parang you will be having the, the what's this the activity no the the sharing sessions of the uh, of the teachers no okay so i have to uh, bring it to ano yung Miss Ina. Yes, Sir Rolly. Ang dami kong na-notes. Thank you so much po for your sharing. That's really comprehensive. At sana yung mga teachers natin, no, both watching on Zoom and on Facebook, nakapag-notes din kayo. Yung notes ko, Sir Rolly, medyo two pages. 
Kaya, <laughs> we clarified on a lot of things about teaching science through inquiry. And you were able to debunk some misconceptions na porke science, ganito lang dapat yung approach. I love how you um, were able to highlight the use of realia in teaching science. Kung kailangang matutunan ang heart, magpakita ng heart ng baboy. Kung kailangang ituro ang sounds, magpakinig, di ba? And I read somewhere that students learn best if their senses are tapped into, di ba? Maraming maraming salamat po dyan. For those who are watching on Facebook Live, ishare nyo po yung key learnings nyo, no? And don't forget to thank Sir Rolly. Um, you can send us heart reaction Tag us or tag Gokong Way Brothers Foundation or even share what you learned on your Facebook feed. Sir Rolly, meron po tayong mga questions dito habang nag-sisek or habang nag-breakout session yung mga participants natin here on Zoom. For those in Zoom, choose the breakout room of the grade level you are handling. Again, and discuss your learnings about the talk. The Zoom room is now open. For those who are tuned in via Facebook Live, you may participate through the Padlet links posted in our Facebook Live comments and on your screen. In the Padlet, you can share, number one, what are the different inquiry-based activities that you are doing in your class. Minsan kasi ginagawa na pala natin, Sir Rolly, no? hindi lang natin alam na inquiry-based pala yung tawag doon. Diba? And what questions can we use to prompt students into the start of the process of inquiry? I-share nyo na yan para magamit din ng iba nating co-teachers. And of course, what questions do you still have about teaching science through inquiry? So, Rolly, gusto ko lang i-highlight yung ginawa mo na actual teaching of different um, leveled students na hindi lang pala pang matalino yung inquiry-based um, instruction no for science. Kasi most of the time, akala ng mga teachers kapag may bagong approach, pang mga section 1 lang yon or pilot section lang yon Di ba hindi naman totoo yon Sir Rolly? Uh, ayun. May, may resibo ako, yun, yung try out. <laughs> Importante yung resibo, sabi mo kasi kanina, important yung evidences. I yes. love how you were able to highlight the scaffolding of the learning process. Mag-start tayo sa alam ng bata. Tapos, tanungin natin sila. Tapos, mag-formulate tayo ng explanation based on evidences and let them evaluate the explanation. Hindi laging teacher de ba, Sir Rolly? Ang galing ko ba naalala ko yung mga tinuro mo? Ang dami ko notes eh, dito. <laughs> Sir Rolly, um, again, I will encourage all the the Facebook live watchers, tanong lang po kayo kay Sir Rolly para maibato natin agad sila. Lalo na sila, Ma'am Porsi, Ma'am Jeanette Punong Bayan, um, nagpapasalamat po sila sa inyo, Sir Meron din po tayo from SDO Copies, si, si Ma'am Lenny Manalo. Thank you daw po, sir, sa inyo. Again, we encourage you to type in your questions. Pero may baon din ako, Sir Rolly. Okay lang, ako muna yung mag uh, Sure. <laughs> sabi, na, sabi kanina that the role of the teacher should be facilitators of learning. Pero minsan, hindi natin alam kung kailan na tayo papasok to intervene. When do we know as teachers when to intervene in the inquiry-based learning process? Ah, ganito ano? Usually, uh, mag-intervene ka na kung halimbawa nagkakaroon na ng misconception, naliligaw na yung ano, yung yung bata do sa correct understanding, no? However, pwede kong gamitin mo ng last resort 'yon, ano? Kasi pwedeng kasi ako I believe in constructivism as well, ano, yung yung wherein pero in the social context wherein hindi lang yung bata no we socially ano constructed yung knowledge no so ganito gagawin ko muna no so if the student made a mistake or a partially correct answer no uh, i ask the other students so what they think about the question you pose no until they build the correct understanding no with pro prompting and probing more questions no mm -hmm. so ganun muna tanungin ko muna yung iba no bago ano bago sa akin ano no So, pero kapag talagang ligaw na ligaw na yan, you might ano, you might interfere kapag ka meron ng masyado ng mali, no, ang nangyayari, no. Pero so far, uh, mas gusto ko yung ano muna, we we allow the students, no, 
empower them, socially construct the knowledge, no? Sila sila yung magano, no? Uh, at at the same time, tumatakbo isip nila lagi, not just passive learning lang o passive listening lang, no? Ganda, ang ganda nung social yung learning. It's not that the students will just sit down on their chairs comfortably and wait for the teachers to tell them na ito, ito yung dapat yung aralin, ganito dapat nating ginawa. Um, I love also how you mentioned that you prompt and probe the statements of the students and allow other students to jump into the discussion para they feel the sense of, um, you know, part sila nung learning and ownership of their learning. Thank you for that, sir. Meron pa tayong questions dito. Um, sometimes takot yung mga teachers to do inquiry-based teaching kasi malaki yung, yung class size nila. Is inquiry-based teaching applicable to a large class? Ah, yung saan? Oo nga, na, mukhang isang, isa rin mga ano yun, eh, trinial problem yan na, ano, no, na nakikita natin lalo na sa public school. Okay. So, pwede naman siyang ma-apply pa din, ano? Uh, you provided that the teacher uses the so-called cooperative learning, no? so you can divide the groups, no? Divide the class into groups, no? With tasks, no? Where they can do certain things, no? Okay, no? Para ma-address yung yung size ng class, no? Medyo mahirap siya, pero at least um, kahit pa paano, no? Ma- meron meron paring ano, no? Meron paring magagawa yan, no? You you try you try to process their ano, no? Uh, process their answers, no? Pwedeng mag-delegate ka ng leaders do sa bawat group, no? You, at least, ayun, nagkakaroon, nagka, nag, nag, nagkakaroon ng resp- sense of responsibility pa yung mga bata, no? When they do uh, cooperative learning, no? So, isa yan sa mga nakikita kong ano, no? Large, sa mga large class na ano, you make them, ano, no? I-divide mo sila sa mga maliliit na groups, no? And then, give them certain tasks. Okay. Sir, I love how you were able to mention a classroom management um, technique in the instruction of inquiry-based learning. You've mentioned cooperative learning wherein um, students will take on specific role. Kahit ba timekeeper lang, di ba? Responsibility rin nila yun. Kahit oh. scribe lang, di ba? And I feel like if students are given enough um, responsibility in the teaching learning process, they will step up to the rule and actually learn more, di ba, Sir Rolly? Yes, okay. yes. Meron pa tayong questions dito, syempre, hindi tayo magpapahuli. Um, how can we be sure that the students meet the lesson objectives through inquiry lessons? Okay. Paano nga ba tayo makakasigurado dyan? Okay, so definitely, no. Whenever you make, ano, no, uh, when you, when you're conducting, ano, no, uh, a lesson, ano, or implementing a lesson in the class, um, hindi tayo nagtatap, hindi tayo laging, ano, no, uh, naghihintay lang na sa do sa quiz, yung katapusan ng ano. We try to probe, no, the progress of the students, no, by giving them formative assessment, no. Uh, ang mga formative assessment pwede in the form of embedded questions in the worksheets. No? Yung wag wag kana wag muna itanong later on, itanong muna during instruction niyan. May mga tanong tayong mga ano. Ah, uh, 'yun. Kahit to example noon, yung batang sumisilip do sa box, no? 'Yun, may tanong doon eh, no? O parang instruction niya tayo, ano? Uh, yes. draw how the ano, draw the path of light that help you that help you see the object inside the box. 'Yan. So, yung mga ganun, no? mga formative assessment 'yan, ano? Hindi laging writing, ano? Mas usually lalo na pag elementary 'yan mga drawing drawing niya draw arrows mga ganyan. Pwede, pwede din 'yon. It's not always writing, no? Yung ano niya, ano niya ano. Dapat mayroon ganoon, formative assessment, no? Na monitor mo para nakikita mo kung kung nalalapit na ba ng ma-attain yung objective o lumilihis ba tayo, no? Kaya you must therefore collect their answers, no, in the worksheets, no? Study their responses, no? Kasi the, their responses will be your key to know how you can improve even your pedagogy yung pagtuturo mo no i think this is something that teachers do not usually do after class yes yes iba iba mm, correct <laughs> nag guilty no, din guilty din pala <laughs> sorry diba, sir no? oh yun studying their responses and making revisions to improve their resp- their, their responses no making revisions in the lesson i mean ano, to improve their responses no so isa yun sa mga ano kolektahin yung mga ano yung mga responses no Uh, para ma- ma- lalo na yung mga interesting lalo na yung mga sablay bakit kaya to sablay? Rick. yung layo <laughs> yung sagot ano nangyari? ano may mali sa model ko do sa aking aking manipulative baka nandun pala si- 
nandoon pala susi baka mali naman ang tanong ko mga ganun mm-hmm. so doon mo doon mo maano no baka kailangan ng scaffolding muna bago dumating doon sa ano doon sa lesson kasi actually yung lesson na yon yung sumisilip yung bata sa ano sa box may nauna doon eh yung scaffolding pa noon eh ang nauna doon meron muna akong mirror tapos may kandila pero yung kandila naka-conceal hindi nakikita ng bata so makikita lang ng bata yung yung kandila yung lighted candle yung light lit candle sa mirror sa reflection ng mirror and then they'll, they'll ask no paano mo nakita yan ano uh, show the ano the, the path of light no where you were, where you were, you were able to see uh, the candle no uh, on the on the mirror no which is he, hidden from you no yung ano yung ang hidden yung candle ano so so dahil sa reflection ng ano ng mirror nakikita niya no? so from there ido-drawing nila yung path ng light no so yun yung parang scaffolding ko bago dumating do sa may box no okay kasi maraming misconception diyan eh nung pag ginawa mong pretest yan ang laki makikita mo yung difference no minsan nakakala nila the light hits the eye tapos tumalbog daw sa object <laughs> meron Mer- naman the light hits the object, hindi na tumalbog. Wala. Nakadano. Hanggang object lang. Hindi na pumunta. Oo, oh, hindi na pumunta. Oh, oh. Meron din, sigurista, meron na pumunta sa mata, tapos merong ano. Pumunta o, pa sa object. Totoo naman, pumunta sa mata, pero hindi yun nakatulong para makakita sa'yo. No? So, ang tanong kasi, the, the path of light eh, that help you see the object. Eh, no? No, sa, no, kung tutusin naman, nung nagre-reflect naman ng light sa mga objects, all directions naman pero tinatanong lang natin yung path of light para makita yung ano so kung hindi mo ginawa yung scaffolding na yun magkaka ano magkakagulo-gulo no? so importante yun ano yung pag yung scaffolding and then you make questions in the scaffolding so yun malalaman mo kung kung namimit mo na yung objectives ng lesson mo okay thank you sir Rolly sobrang practical yung tips na na-share mo, no? And I think I mentioned this a while ago during the math discussion. The teachers need r- parang easy open task or easy um, easy open activities to readily apply to their classroom. So, hayaan nyo po akong magpasalamat sa inyo, Sir Rolly. Your, um, your sharing is very valuable. Ang dami ko po talagang tut- natutunan. No joke. Okay. Sir Rolly will also be part of our um, STEM Collab Facebook group. So kung meron pa po kayong tanong sa kanya, itag nyo lang po siya sa ating Facebook group. At hindi naman suplado si Sir Rolly. Sir Rolly, tama ba? Mag-a-answer tama. naman siya ng mga sagot nyo. Yes, Sir Rolly, ang dami pong mga sharings dito. Like, for example, I like the way the topic is presented. Very substantial. Um... Wes, oh, Wes Miku of NCR said, inquiry-based approach in the classroom experience. He starts with a question that will allow students to observe and gather answers using their basic sentences. So maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in to this Facebook Live. Please share your key learnings and maybe take this opportunity to thank Sir Rolly for sharing his expertise about the topic. Siyempre, um, our discussion will continue online through our Facebook group, The STEM Collab. Join the group to be able to join conversations, access the materials, and get the chance to win prizes. Para sa naghahanap po ng feedback form, it will be posted in the STEM Collab Facebook group, and the Facebook group will be posted in the chat box. Please answer the form to receive certificate of attendance and you may also receive a certificate of completion equivalent to eight hours if you share this session with your colleagues through the LAC session in your school. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit, Dr. Rolando Tan, for sharing your time, knowledge, and valuable insight. He will also be part of the STEM Collab community in Facebook. Meron po ba kayong gustong pahuling linya, Sir Rolly, for the teachers? Um, siguro ano na lang, ano ba to? parting words, gano'n? <laughs> yes, mga gano'n lang, Sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think, ano, never give up, no? Uh, never give up in your, uh, kahit ganitong ang hirap-hirap magturo, no? Sa panahon ngayon, mahirap na nga actually before pandemic, nadagdagan pa tayo ng ganito, no? Uh, never give up and uh, as your in ano, in terms of professional development never give up learning as well ano? new things no new insights no 
some of this ano probably na, nadidig niyo na rin sa ibang mga PD programs but prob- probably you need some refresher and probably baka malaman yung ano no uh, hindi niyo lang napansin to dati pero ngayon nakita niyo ang value pala no ng mga ganitong ano mga ganto mga uh, professional development ano no programs no yan yun lang thank you again sir Rolly Itatag ko po kayo kapag may tanong ako about inquiry-based learning in science. Again, our conversation in STEM Collab Facebook page will continue. See you there and have a wonderful afternoon, science teachers. On behalf of the Gokong Way Brothers Foundation, we want to thank all of our participants both in Zoom and in Facebook Live. We can't wait to hear from all of you as well as in the STEM Collab Facebook group. Tandaan natin, tayo ang magpapalawak ng ating natutunan. Maraming salamat po. Have a nice day. Thank you. GBF offers the Teach Them Scholarship for aspiring and in-service teachers. Science and math educators teaching any level in deaf ed schools or in tertiary schools may apply to any of the four programs under Teach Them, delivered through our partner institutions. Reach your dream of becoming a math or science teacher through a college scholarship. Strengthen your knowledge and competencies through a master's degree in science math education. Acquire teaching units and become a professional teacher through the Teacher Certificate Program. Complete your master's degree with a grant for your thesis or capstone project. Scholars receive an annual financial grant and access to scholar development programs. Upon completion, they serve as math and science educators in DepEd or higher education institutions. Apply now to the Teach Them Scholarship Program and be a STEM champion. Let's build the future today. Tara, teach them na.